In July 1944, Allied forces broke out from Normandy following the D-Day landings of one month before. American troops began their march across France, liberating Paris and making their final push into Nazi Germany. As fighting intensified, so did the need for reminders of who and what they were fighting for. Letters and packages were the connections to loved ones and to their lives at home. But as the American army spread across Europe, delivery of mail became ever more difficult. Seven million Americans, military and civilian, were stationed in the European theater. Most were changing locations often, and many soldiers shared common names. By Christmas 1944, 17 million pieces of mail had piled up in Birmingham, England. Packages of cakes and cookies rotted in warehouses while the troops shivered on the front lines of France and Belgium. The soldiers noticed, and army reports noted the lack of reliable mail was hurting morale. A new mail delivery system was needed, and it would be managed by a new unit, fresh from the States, and ready to prove themselves up to the task. On February 3rd, 1945, the first group of women from the 6888th Central Postal Directory Battalion shipped out from New York. The 6888 was the first army unit of its kind, consisting entirely of African-American women. It was under the command of Major Charity Adams, the first black woman to earn a commission in what would become the Women's Army Corps. Arriving in Birmingham, the women of the 6888 were met with unheated warehouses stacked to the ceiling with letters and packages. Immediately, they got to work, splitting into shifts and working 24 hours a day, seven days a week. They tracked the locations of millions of troops and had the solemn duty of returning mail addressed to service members who had died. All the while, the stacks of undelivered mail began to shrink as the 6888 adopted the motto, no mail, low morale. And yet they still found themselves having to prove their worth to their fellow Americans. During an inspection by an army general, Major Adams was chastised for not having all her troops present. She explained that the women worked in shifts and that she was following orders that she was given but was cut off. The general threatened to send a white officer to show her how to command the unit. Over my dead body, sir, she replied. Major Adams remained commander of the 6888, clearing the six-month backlog of mail in less than half that time. Their mission in England complete, the 6888 transferred to France in June 1945, where they faced a similar stockpile. Once again, it was cleared in half the time expected. While in France, the 6888 felt the same loss as so many American units during the war, as three women, PFC Mary Barlow, PFC Mary Bankston, and Sergeant Dolores Brown were killed in a Jeep accident. They would be buried with honors alongside their brothers-in-arms at the Normandy American Cemetery. Only four women would be buried in Normandy. Three were from the 6888. By late 1945, the war now over, American troops began their long-awaited trek home. Among those heading home was the general who had threatened to replace Major Adams. Since that encounter, they had developed a good working relationship, and just before leaving, he showed up unannounced. Adams, I've received my orders to return to the States, he told her. It's not easy for me to say what I've come to say. Working with you has been quite an education for me, especially about Negroes. It's been a long time since anyone challenged me, black or white, but you took me on. You outsmarted me, and I am proud that I know you. Charity Adams would be promoted to Lieutenant Colonel, the highest ranking African-American woman in the Army at the time. The remainder of the 6888 would return home to a still segregated country in February 1946 and be disbanded without further ceremony. 855 women served with the 6888 during World War II. They were the only battalion of all African-American women to serve abroad during the war. The example they set proved an education for a great many, opening the door for generations of service women since. Ladies and gentlemen, the surviving women of the 6888 Central Postal Directory Battalion. Ms. King, what do you want Americans to remember about the women that served with you in the 6888? We wanted to do our part 
and serving our country to make people realize that we too loved our country. Absolutely. Mrs. Ruddick, what was the most rewarding part for you in serving with the 6888? The most satisfying part of my career was knowing that we did the job as requested and now, and we did it in record time and we moved on. Absolutely did your job, yeah. I'm curious to know, what does it mean for the 6888 to finally be receiving the recognition they deserve after 75 years? Well, it was quite a surprise. Uh, we had gone about our duties and marriage and making our lives. It's quite wonderful to know that uh, people really cared. I think it's a great thing, but I truly, truly regret the fact that it boils down to seven of us to receive the gratification when there were so many who gave their lives to <laughs> retake the vote to the time. Ladies and gentlemen, the surviving veterans of the 6 Triple Eight. Yeah.